Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In the past few videos, we've been talking a lot about the structures in the axilla in a lot of detail. And we keep talking about the axillary artery, which is shown right here. What I want to do here is show you how the axillary artery is divided up, where it starts and where it ends, and then also talk about the branches that come off of it, because that's also important. All right, so first of all, where does the axillary artery begin? Well, we kind of hinted at that. Here's the subclavian artery. Now, here is the clavicle right here. The clavicle has been cut, as you can see. And you can see here that the subclavian artery is going to pass kind of over the superior aspect of the first rib. This is the first rib right here. The point where the subclavian artery becomes the axillary artery, and you can actually see that change in color slightly right here from red to a pinkish color, that point is where the subclavian artery has completed its passage over the superior aspect of the first rib. So where I'm tracing, that's the lateral edge of the superior aspect of the first rib. Sometimes they'll call it the superior margin. Okay? When it crosses over that, it has become the axillary artery. The axillary artery travels in the axilla, right? And you can see here that for part of the time, it travels underneath the pectoralis minor muscle. So here's your pectoralis minor. It originates on these ribs right here, actually ribs three, four, and five, and then the fibers converge at the coracoid process. The axillary artery passes under that muscle, okay, and it emerges under that, and it'll go down here and pretty much right where it passes over the lower border of teres major, it becomes the brachial artery. Okay? So when it comes past teres major, it at that point has become the brachial artery. So those right there are the cutoff points for the axillary artery. It begins the axillary artery from the subclavian artery when it passes over the lateral superior margin of the first rib, and then it ends and becomes the brachial artery when it passes past the lower border of teres major. Now, the axillary artery itself is divided into three parts for convenience. The reason we do this is because it makes it easier to divide up the branches that come off of the axillary artery. So first, define the three parts. The first part is from the start of the axillary artery up until it gets to the pectoralis minor muscle right here. So anything that branches off of the axillary artery in this region is branching from the first part. The second part of the axillary artery is where it is deep to the pectoralis minor muscle. And then the third part of the axillary artery is from where it emerges from underneath the pectoralis minor to its end at the inferior border or lower border of teres major. And so when we talk about this, there's going to be one branch from the first part, two branches from the second part, and three from the first, which actually is kind of convenient. One from one, two from two, three from three. So now we're going to switch pictures here, and we're going to look at the arteries or branches that come off of the axillary artery at the three different regions. So let's zoom in here and look at the first part. The first branch that comes off of the axillary artery in the first part is the superior thoracic artery. It's really coming off of the axillary artery underneath this muscle right here, which is the subclavius muscle. So that's your superior thoracic artery. If we go back to one of the previous uh, pictures, one of the previous slides, we can actually see the superior thoracic artery right here. Here's the subclavius muscle. You can see the superior thoracic artery emerging from the axillary artery underneath this muscle. Also notice that initially in the axilla, the long thoracic nerve travels with the superior thoracic artery. Eventually the long thoracic nerve, remember, deviates from the superior thoracic artery, as you can see right here, and runs with the lateral thoracic artery, which we'll cover in just a minute. So that's your superior thoracic artery. It's the only one coming from the first part of the axillary artery. Now the second part of the axillary artery is deep to the pectoralis minor muscle, and there are two branches there. There's the thoracoacromial artery, and then this artery, which is the lateral thoracic artery. Let's actually zoom in there. So here is the thoracoacromial artery. It looks like it's coming from the first part, but really its origin is deep to this 
uh, first head of the pectoralis minor muscle, and then it emerges um, into the first part. But it's actually coming from the second part. So that's your thoracoacromial artery. And then this artery right here, which is the lateral thoracic artery, is really originating from the axillary artery underneath the third head of the pectoralis minor muscle, and then it kind of comes down into the third region right here. Okay. If we go back to one of the previous slides, let's actually take a look at this one, we can actually see here the thoracoacromial artery. Notice here it's coming out from underneath the pectoralis minor muscle, and then it's really having a bunch of branches here that go to the various regions of the shoulder. There's also some here in the, in the pectoral region that you can't see, but it's really serving the deltoid, the shoulder joint region, the acromion, and a little bit of the clavicular head of the pectoralis major. Okay? That's your thoracoacromial artery. And then down here, again, you can see this is the lateral thoracic artery. You can actually see it emerging from underneath the pectoralis minor. It's coming down here, and it's really going to be running with that long thoracic nerve, which is right here. Okay? So this is your lateral thoracic artery. Those are going to be the two branches that come off of the second part of the axillary artery. That leads us to the third part, which is right here. Okay? The third part, the first artery that comes off of it is going to be the subscapular artery. Here's the subscapular artery. And the subscapular artery, it's worth mentioning, has two other branches. This one coming off here is the thoracodorsal artery. And then the one more lateral is the circumflex scapular artery. Remember the circumflex scapular artery goes through the triangular space right here and goes out posteriorly. Okay. And then here's the thoracodorsal artery, which will actually travel with the thoracodorsal nerve to the latissimus dorsi muscle. Okay. So that's your subscapular artery. That's the first branch. The other two are just the anterior and posterior circumflex humeral arteries. Okay. These are emerging from the axillary artery, kind of at the level of the quadrangular space. Okay. Uh, you can see here the anterior circumflex humeral artery is going over the anterior surface of the humerus. And then the posterior one, posterior humeral circumflex artery, comes off and travels through the quadrangular space posteriorly, also looping around the shaft of the humerus right here. And it will actually anastomose with the anterior circumflex humeral artery at approximately this region right here. They actually connect with each other. So these two are the anterior and posterior humeral circumflex arteries. And along with the subscapular artery right here, those are the three branches that come off of the axillary artery. And those are the only other significant branches that come off. As soon as we get to this point right here, again, the lower border of teres major, the axillary artery just changes names and it becomes the brachial artery. Notice, however, and we'll be covering this later on too, as soon as it becomes the brachial artery, pretty quickly, it gives off the profunda brachii artery. So the brachial artery continues down, but it really very quickly gives off this, gives off this profunda brachii artery. Um, and that profunda brachii artery is going to travel down the posterior aspect of the humerus. The brachial artery kind of maintains its anterior position, and once the brachial artery gets to the elbow, it'll basically divide into the radial and ulnar arteries. Okay, So hopefully that makes sense and you learned a little bit about the branching of the axillary artery. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.